Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's something completely different. A handy mech. This is a so-called mega. It's a transistor type. So there's a battery in this one and it actually says... Can you hear this? So I think there's some oscillator generating a high voltage. It even says here the voltage it's generating and the mega ohm you're reading out. So maybe this is the limit. That many volts and that many mega ohms. So I think it is also a voltmeter. So that means if you're not pushing this button, you will have a voltmeter. And then there is a zero for ohms. I think you should short it. It even came came with this set of cables, a little bit crusty, and there's a test resistor here, and this is 200 kilo ohms, so probably we can test if it can do something with this. How about if we short? Oh, look at that! Haha, uh -huh. I can put it all the way to zero. You can hear the batteries getting Ooh, lower and lower and lower. But it is generating some voltage. Now let's try and charge these with, with our fingers and then push the button, yeah? I guess that is not a good idea. What I've tried to do 100 kilo ohm across the voltmeter and let's try again. So that is 260 volts. So let's try and ch change the resistor to 220k and see what happens. Aha, the voltage gets higher. But you can hear... Ugh. So that is 200... And 20k, and I mean, we even got the right reading, and the voltage is also not right. Nordiske Instrumentfabrik, made in Denmark, huh? I am always a little bit scared with instruments that's really really old and they contain a battery so this one how old is this <laughs> oh, look at the leather and cardboard case and stuff like that unscrew it like that and ooh, funny funny corrosion Oh, come on, man. So far, so good. Now it's out of the carrying case. Ooh, that is some crusty. But the batteries have been replaced. What the? This is some old. Crusty, crusty, oh no. <laughs> I am mena. So that will be the four and a half volts batteries in there. Tun, tun. Oh, the smell is powerful. Some battery acid ate half of the metal here. And this, oh, look at that. I'm just trying to clean some of this off. I think there's no way to do that, but they... Oh, look at that screw. I don't know if there actually is a screw down there. But hopefully I can get in here and see what else is in there. But at least it seems to be working. So that wasn't actually as bad as it looked. Oh, we got some wires, so I better just... 
go this way. Let's have a look. I actually thought the two batteries, they were like in series with a center tap, but that is not the case. So this will be the 9 volt input. And it goes down here. So that I'll be able to put into lithium cells instead. So what have we got here? I guess that will be the diodes, the two brown ones. I guess so it's a push-pull configuration and that will be the two transistors. Aha! So the windings on the transformator, that is the self-oscillator. Well, the, yeah, so this is the oscillator circuit. And then it generates a high DC voltage and it goes to... Where is that going? So is this a capacitor, is this one? Or is it a resistor? I don't know, then we got a... So this is the zero part. We got some capacitors here in... What is that? Only 400 volts. So how is that running 1200 volts? Hmm. That is a little bit confusing. But anyway, so that is a test switch that kind of activates both the oscillator and changes the meter from voltmeter to generator and all that. So it says plus on that end. Minus plus, okay. Pretty cool. So that is minus here on the transformator. Green. Can't seem to figure out how. Ah! Ha! Look what this is! I figured it out! See this? This goes positive. This goes negative to that capacitor. Yep. And then, here we go, to that end. See? Minus plus. And this goes, of course, to that capacitor. So that means they're in series. So this is 800 only. No, okay, 600. So that is how it works. Ooh, there's also a capacitor here. 200 volts. Hmm, what is that for? I think I should try and power this up and see what's going on in here. So now I've connected a power supply and set it for 9 volts. Let me try and push the button. Whoa, 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 whoa. I think it's actually the current limiter. Let's try and change that a little bit. But how much, how, how is that possible? This can't be right. Okay, now two amps. Okay, 1.4. So, <laughs> that is just way intense. And it isn't really changing um, if I load it or if I don't load it. If I, I only, so this is 200 kilo ohm, 220. One point five amp, but, but how is it? How can it use that much power? Because all you see is like these two tiny little transistors. I mean, they can not at all handle this. So I mean, there's definitely something wrong in here. This can't be normal. And I've been looking a little bit on the schematic here, and it seems like all this stuff here is primary side, and just the green and the yellow, that is the output. So this green here is the output that goes to the two diodes, and they go each way, right? See, the yellow one, 
goes here to the center point of the two capacitors. And of course they are charged positive and negative via those two diodes. And then there is a 2 mega ohm resistor between those for discharge. I would have been a little bit more happy if the discharge would have been to, to the common... What if one of these is not working? I don't know if this is real smart, but this is just how it is. And this this is a 200 kilo ohm resistor that is connected. I don't know if we can see this. But it's also connected from this side of the capacitors. So this is this goes of course to our test. Alright, so so how is it using that much current? My idea is I'll try and desolder the two wires from the two diodes and see if that has something to do with oh we can just lift this one wire. That is the easiest. Then I'm going to have a look. Is it the same? So with the green wire lifted, let's have a look. Try and push the button. Point six. So that means the rest of all that power goes via the, the diodes to the caps and to the discharge. Aha, uh -huh, so that is interesting. Maybe that is the one that is using all this power, right? I just had to take it all the way out of the case. It actually works like this. So this piece here was mounted this way in here, right? And then so those are the two small stand standoffs. And here at the top, it's actually the banana connections that is making both a like a holder and they're making a connection to each top corner like this. And then they just simply use some bigger ones. So better hold uh, everything here. So this means inside the battery compartment, you actually have test voltage on the two screws in here. So if there's leak of battery acids and stuff, ooh, ooh, ooh. real nasty, huh? So what else have we got in here? So we got some trimmers, and this is of course for the two readouts. The thing is that this meter is of course a voltmeter when it is not um, used as a mega. And it works like this, it's handling both AC or DC. I mean, come on, it's a 500 volt meter, so it really doesn't matter, right? It's just showing the peak voltage. So we got two diodes here, and they're doing the AC conversion. So that is pretty nice. This is what I wanted to show you guys. Just by having oh, only 32 volts, but anyway, I think you get the point. Let's let's try and connect that here in a second. Oh, that messy, messy mess. Maybe I can do it with one hand. Ooh, scary. I think it doesn't matter. I don't have a good connection here, right? This just don't work. Hey. See, that is my 32 volts. I did have a good connection, but red and black was swapped. So it's actually doing it, it's half wave AC. <laughs> so that is actually a good idea because that is uh, how you get it kind of accurate. 
Yeah, it's not so so bad again. So this is my take on the refurbishment of this really nice mega. So the battery batteries are now replaced with the two lithium ion cells and two uh, sockets. I had to modify the sockets a little bit because it's just too difficult to put in the cells. And they're in series and it's like this plus and minus, easy easy. And then all I have to do is now solder these two here and screw it all together. Also, the banana plugs, so this one was cracked and the other one is coming I don't know if we can, we can see if I press this a little bit. It's probably going to crack. Yeah, but this one was so close to crack as well. So what I've done is I replaced the two bananas. And while everything was open, I could now clean the glass on the inside and the outside. And I could clean and polish everything here. So I think my Mega na is now super duper nice. And I'm really, really happy about it. Now I just need to remember to use it every time I test some old funny equipment and this will potentially save my life and save all sorts of problems. I really didn't like this uh, bottom lid here because it's super badly corroded and also very very high for the batteries I need to use. And there is another problem with the with this mounting here and the screw and stuff it sticks out so i can't put this uh, unit flat on the table and it is this is not a good solution so what i did is i measured uh, the inside and the outside sizes and the curves of this and also the needed height and then i 3d designed a new um a new lid so here is the 3D design of the new lid. It was super easy with the mounting uh, screw because that is uh, directly in the middle. And what I did is I made the hole for the screw so it's uh, all the way in here. And now it can be placed flat on the table. And uh, also I made everything uh, 3D uh, printing uh, friendly just using normal FDM. So that was... Uh, very, very easy to uh, 3D print this uh, new case. So this is the old case versus the new one. You can see the, oops, I don't know. Yeah, but there's a big difference in the, in the height. So let's see how well this fits. Ta ta, and then I can put in a screw. So now my unit is a lot smaller and a lot better. So that is how it should be. Now it is need to use and standing good and stable on the table.